Hello everybody, my name is Marcelo Vignali and today's talk is going to be about overcoming obstacles. Working in a sketchbook forces your brain to plan. And I, and I mention this because so many of us, uh, so many artists, younger artists, are working on computers and they do a lot of their work in computers. But I would suggest and I would offer uh, to, for you to consider working analog, using a sketchbook to do uh, your work. Because the problem is that a computer gives us so many options that we never have to make a commitment to a drawing because we can always change it. However, drawing in a sketchbook forces us to plan our drawings and use creative visualization. We have to imagine the drawing completed in our minds and then use our talent and our skill and our resources to hit that target. Sometimes when we're comping things together in a computer, we don't have to use that creative visualization because we simply can test it to see if it works. If we like it, we keep it. If we don't like it, we don't keep it. But working in a sketchbook doesn't give you that option. There have been so many times where I'm working on my sketchbook and as I'm working, I have to stop, pause. I have to collect my thoughts and make decisions about what I'm about to do. And then in doing so, I start to plan, I start to visualize the drawing, and I create a target for that. But today's talk is going to be about adversity. Look, there's no edit undo in a sketchbook, so what happens when things go wrong? I'm sure some of you are terrified by this prospect. But when things go wrong, this forces us to be creative problem solvers. You see, problems give you opportunities to explore things that you didn't plan on exploring. It's what's known as happy accidents. So many times artists are looking for happy accidents. And I think that's sometimes why you'll see older artists or more mature artists looking for tools that sometimes are a little clumsy because what they're looking for is that happy accident. Because at a certain point, your skills become such, your planning skills be become such that you're able to cr visualize something and then create it on the page. And you no longer have these accidents that take you places that you didn't expect. And it makes the drawings uh, sometimes a little predictable. And artists start looking for that unpredictability and they start looking for things that create happy accidents. Look, there are no edit undos in life. And in the same way that we have to find a way to be prob creative problem solvers in our sketchbook, but we also have to be creative problem solvers in our life. Because sometimes bad things happen. Bad things happen sometimes when you least expect it. You think that things are going fine and suddenly Suddenly you find yourself dealing with a gigantic mistake. And you can see here, this huge mistake happened. And I thought, what am I going to do? And that's why I thought I would go ahead and I would post this the drawing this uh, as I dealt with the adversity. The first thing uh, that you have to do is understand that dealing with problems in a sketchbook or in your own life is a skill like anything else. I would offer that the earlier that you can learn this skill, the better off you're going to be. So number one, I've, I've got a, three steps here for you to use when mistakes happen, when adversity rears its head. Number one, the first thing that you need to do is deal with the immediacy of the problem. If you saw that the first thing I did was I stopped what I was doing and I grabbed, a, uh, I, I flipped open the page to see how far the ink had gone, if it had soaked through to the other drawing, if it went actually through my blotter page. Then it immediately grabbed another blotter and I put it underneath, I put the paper on top, 
and I used a the, the lighter skin marker to try and saturate the paper and then try to pick it up with a paper towel. I have to admit that I didn't really have much success with that, but it, but I did find the success, the, uh, the lighter ink was moving the darker ink and breaking that up because it was a shat, that was the shadow color. Now the shadow color had completely bled onto the chest and I had, and it was, it had ruined the drawing. But the first thing I did was I dealt with the immediacy of the problem. So I tried to essentially to mop it up using the other marker and a paper behind it to absorb the ink. Now, Will Rogers had a wonderful saying. He said that if you find yourself in a hole, stop digging. And what that means is just deal with the problem immediately. If that means stop digging, stop digging, but deal with the problem immediately. And number two, take time to assess the problem. Part of that includes mourning or lamenting what could have been. You know, look, bad things happen and it sucks and it's okay to just make that admission to yourself like, this sucks. Because feeling pain just simply means that you're human. I know sometimes there's all these you know, people say, oh, you got to get over it, you got to move on. Yes, but I think the first thing you need to do is you need to accept what has happened. I think that uh, James or William James has said that in ex accepting what has happened is the first step to overcoming misfortune. And I think that's so very true because what you need to do is you need to take time to accept where you're at. And you need to mourn the loss of whatever it is. Let's say you're working on a painting and something has happened and it's not going to be where you thought it was going to be. It's not going to be envisioned in the way that you thought it was going to be envisioned. And that's a problem. And you have to, you have to let that go. You have to mourn that that is no longer a viable option uh, for you. So that's the first step. It's accept, or the second step, which is to accept what has happened. And step number three is come up with solutions. Most problems have a solution. However, the bigger the problem, the more difficult the solution becomes. You ever, you ever heard that saying, uh, it, you know, it's easier than it looks, or the solution is easier than it well, I can't think of a single solution that is, uh, you know, sometimes the solutions are very simple, but they're still, they're, they're difficult to do, despite the, them be a solution being simple. Sometimes it's, it's as simple as stepping forward and telling the truth. It's a simple solution, but it's going to be difficult. Well, it doesn't matter if it's difficult. You need to fix the problems. And in this case here, most problems have a solution. Bigger the problem, the more difficult the solution becomes. Nonetheless, stick to moving forward. Just keep moving forward. Winston Churchill, you know, he said, he had a fantastic quote, and he said, if you're going through hell, keep going. You've already mourned your problem. That was step two. Now it's time to move on with the options. Don't keep going back over the same thing or getting stuck in a loop and mourning like, oh, geez, I can't believe this happened to me. Look, you've already done that. Give yourself that time to mourn. If you don't give yourself that time to mourn, you're going to keep going back over step two over and over and over again because you, you never made a conscious effort to accept what has happened. And when you keep moving forward, you know, some, sometimes the options and solutions, they take us to places, you know, we never would have gone otherwise. This isn't necessarily a bad thing. It just means that it's different. You know, when, when bad things happen, you have three choices. You can let it define you. You can let it destroy you. You can let it strengthen you. Sometimes your biggest successes come after your greatest disappointments. Thanks for watching. Now go be fearless.